again, this is part two of a two-part series on how to solve a simple uh, statics problem that involves a three-bar truss right here. Now, at the end of last video, we had all these equations. These are the equations of equilibrium, and all they say is that our structure is not moving. Okay, It's not accelerating. It means all the forces and all the moments on this have to add up to be zero. Because right? if they don't add up to zero, something's moving. If they don't add up to zero, something's accelerating. So we did the free body diagram, wrote out the equations of equilibrium, and we got that far and it ran out of time. So what I'm going to do is erase all this stuff and transferred it over here so we can see what's going on now. Now we already, we already knew that F1x equals zero, so I'm actually going to take that off the, uh, the free body diagram because we know it isn't, it, 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 since it's zero we don't need to account for it anymore. So that's that's taken care of, all right? The next one is we know F1y, which is this one, plus F2y minus that, remember that's minus since it goes against the uh, positive sign convention, um, equals zero, or if you put the thousand newtons on this side, you get a thousand newtons equals that plus that. Okay, that makes sense. Now, it would be nice if I, if I knew what one of those was. So what we did was we took the sum of the moments about some point, and I used point one. Remember, that's point one that's point 0.2 and that's point 0.3, all right? So we'll do that, and uh, when we do that, we get this equation right here, which is one half meter, that distance right there, times F2y equals a thousand newton meters, because there's one uh, meter there and one uh, thousand newtons. So let's take a look at that. If I carry this through, I'm going to find out, oops, very bad too there, um, F2y equals 2,000 Newtons, because the meter there and the meter there cancel out. Remember, always, always, always track your units through a problem. If you track the units through the problem and the units come out right, the numbers will mostly come along for the ride. If the units are right, chances are your numbers are right. If your units are wrong, there's very little chance the numbers are right. So it's a, it makes for a very good check. So um, meters canceled out there, I'm going to be left with newtons. Divide by 0.5, which is the same as multiplying by 2. So now I have that. Now, the way we teach our students at, at uh, Purdue here in the, the Mechanical Engineering Technology Department is we have them uh, underline intermediate answers. And everybody does things a little differently, but I'm going to do that just to try to be consistent. Okay, so if I, if I know that F2y is 2,000 newtons and that equals uh, the sum of those two is 1,000, I'm going to find out, let's, let's move that up here perhaps, um, F one y, which is the thing I don't know yet. Remember that was right here, and there was no uh, moment arm, so this this uh, force there didn't show up in the moment equation. All right, so let's see. I'm going to be one thousand newtons minus f two y. Well, that equals one thousand newtons minus two thousand newtons. That's real easy. Minus one thousand newtons. Okay, so there, there's another intermediate answer. Well, I got a question though. What does minus 1,000 newtons mean? I got a minus sign. Well, all that means is that I, I didn't know what the sign was, and so I just drew it according to my positive sign convention. All that minus sign means is I guessed wrong. That's okay. So really, it's, it's 1,000 newtons negative in that direction. It's really 1,000 newtons down. And that makes sense. 1,000 newtons down there, 1,000 newtons down there, 2,000. Uh, newtons up in the middle, and this is a symmetric problem, although a triangle isn't very symmetric there. Let's try that again. Yeah, that's a little better. There, now it looks a little more symmetric. Because it's symmetric, what's going on one side has to be going on on the other side as well. So I've got that. So I've got the reaction forces. The only thing I don't have left now is I don't know what the forces in the bars are, and that was the goal of the problem. Remember there was a fine statement there? find was find the, the um, forces in the bars, and that was bar 1, bar 2, and bar 3, okay? Well, since this is a symmetric problem, whatever is going on in bar 3 is also going to be going on in bar 2. So I'm going to kind of shorten it a little bit and write that down. So let's, uh, let's do a few things here. Let's write some numbers down there. Minus 1,000 newtons, newtons, come on, there we go and that equals 2,000 newtons. And normally you would write this down a little more cleanly. I'm working on a limited board space, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of recover some real estate here. Okay, there we go. 
So I've got all my intermediate answers. Now I need to, to, to figure out what the forces in the bars are. Well, just like I can write a free body diagram of the entire structure, assuming the entire structure is rigid, I can also look at one small part of the structure. So I'm going to look at that little part right there. I could solve this problem lots of different ways. Okay, I'm just picking one of many legitimate ways. And there, when I say legitimate, I mean they're all mathematically identical. If you have this problem and you decide to solve it a different way and wind up with the same answer, it's very likely you've picked an alternate but just as legitimate way to solve the problem. Right? I'm going to pick this one. I have to pick something, so I'm going to pick this one. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw the free body diagram just at that point and I'm going to take a look at what's going on. Well, I've got a force down of, sorry, 2,000 newtons. 2,000 newtons. Okay, I'm going to guess, and I'm just guessing, I could be wrong, and if I'm wrong, the minus sign in the answer will tell me I'm wrong, so it's okay, it's safe to guess. And I'm going to guess that bar there is in tension. So if it's in tension, it means it's pulling on that joint right there, and I'm going to call that F one bar, all right? If that one's in tension, I'm guessing that one's probably in compression, all right? And if it's comp in compression, that means it's pushing on that joint, and I'm going to call that F3 bar, okay? So now I've got just a point here. This is the free body diagram for point, for point 3, okay? That's all that is. That's the sum of all the forces that are acting at that point. Just like I did a free body diagram of the whole structure, I can put a fictitious cut, which I've done right there, and I can do a free body diagram of just one little point. So let's just do the same thing again. When you do a free body diagram, the next thing you're going to do is equations of equilibrium. Worked before, let's do it again. The difference here is that since this is a point, and all the, all the forces go through that point, it doesn't make sense to, do, to uh, sum the moments. All right. So I can only sum forces. Well, let's do this now. Let's sum the forces in the x direction. Those all have to be zero. So let's see. F, now again, let's got to have my sign convention here. Now I'll just, just for reasons of good form, I'll put the moment in even though we don't need it. Okay, so F1, that's going to be minus F1 bar and minus because it's, going, it's acting against the positive sign convention. All right, now this is 45 degrees there. Okay, so it's going to be plus, let's see, F3 bar cosine 45 degrees. Well, cosine 45 equals sine 45, and that all equals the square root of 2 over 2, which is 0 0.7071 something. All right, so got that in there. That all has to equal 0. Next thing to do some of the forces in the y direction also have to equal zero because the thing's not accelerating. Net forces have to be zero. So I'm going to say minus 2,000 newtons. Sorry, 1,000 newtons, not 2,000. My apologies. By now you guys are probably wondering, why did he write 2,000 newtons there? Well, I messed up, okay? It happens. Um, all right, so that's going to be plus F3 bar. Now it's sine 45 degrees. Although in this case it doesn't really matter since sine 45 and cosine 45 are the same thing. So let's write out, I've got two things I don't know, F1 and F3, all right? Two things I don't know, I better have two equations. Well, I do, one, two. All right, so let's write these out. So F1 bar equals, F, well, here, I'm going to write out the number here too, just to uh, make things go a little faster here. Square root of 2 over 2 times F3 bar, all right? There's one equation. I took that and just slightly rearranged it. And I'm going to take the second one and slightly rearrange it, and I'm going to say that uh, square root of 2 over 2 times F3 bar equals 1,000 newtons. So there you go. I'm going to, I know that F3 bar is going to equal, let's see, two square roots of two times a thousand. Newton says 1,414.2 pretty much newtons. All right, there's one. I'm going to call that an intermediate result right now, although I'm eventually going to write this out, write the answer down, I'm going to put a box around it. So if I know what F3 uh, bar is, uh, figuring out what F1 bar is easy. If you, if you run through the math, F1 bar is a thousand newtons. Okay, I did that before 
and you can double check me and make sure that's right. Well, there's my other answer. If that's positive and that's positive, and I think I did this right, that means I guessed right on those signs. All right, if I guessed wrong, no problem. It just means I got a minus sign there. So I've got all my, my uh, forces on this side. I know F1 bar and F3 bar. Because the problem is symmetric, F3 bar and F2 bar are the same. If you don't believe me, draw the free body diagram of point one and, and uh, convince yourself. All right, don't just take it from me. So I've got all this stuff down. The last thing to do is write out the answer. And the deal is, you, your professor, your instructor, will most likely have a requirement that you have to uh, maintain a certain number of uh, significant figures. I'm going to work to three significant figures only because that's what we usually ask our students here to do. Whatever your, your instructor wants to do, that's what you should do. Don't do it because I do it. All right, so I know that F1 bar was uh, 1,000 newtons. And that's tension, all right? Positive is tension, negative is compression, so that indicates tension. Now, I also know that F2 bar equals F3 bar, and that's 1,414.2 newtons. Always keep the unit on there. Now, I just said I was going to use three significant figures. Well, that's five right there. Ugh, probably not what I want. So, um, since I would have asked my students to work to three significant figures, this would actually be the correct answer. I'm going to draw a box around that. And in the GFSA format, you also put the word answer there. So there we go. In two parts now, we've started with a simple three-bar truss, um, drawn free body diagrams of the whole truss and of a point on the truss, calculated the reaction forces at the two points of reaction, and figured out the forces in all three of the bars. So there you go. Work through this yourself and make sure you get the same answers I do. I think I got them right, but check me. All right, I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.